Welcome to the Flower Lounge, a place for conversations with wildly creative people and a little plant-loving wisdom to help you experience life in full bloom. I'm Katie Hess, flower alchemist and founder of Lotus Way, and I believe in a world where we're all living at our personal edge. On this episode of the Flower Lounge, Ksenia Abdulova and I talk about conscious social media, storytelling, and how to create endless possibilities for yourself, both offline and online. Two to three tablespoons of what? Cacao. Oh, cacao, okay. Mesquite. Per person. Per person, mesquite. A tablespoon of mesquite, mm-hmm. teaspoon of monk fruit. Okay, and then I'll just do whatever I want. And- the cacao lab in the fridge or if you can find the right jar with cacao on the, on the shelf that works could i have She's one a, too <laughs> she would like one too <laughs> welcome to the flower lounge podcast i'm super excited this week uh i want to introduce uh ksenia abdulova we met several months ago in new york city and it was sort of, a, uh, well, we, we met a few times, right? But the most kind of wild explosion of a meeting is when we showed up at her house in Brooklyn with tons of flowers. And we did an amazing photo session. And then we decorated, basically, we decorated your whole body with flowers and crystals from your boyfriend, Eric, right? right. That was an amazing experience. And we also got a chance to experience Ksenia's work as social media maven and it was an amazing experience um, that we can talk more about. But let me do the official intro here. Ksenia's life mission lies in connecting people to their hearts through healing food, events, and a refreshingly wholesome approach to digital storytelling. And I can attest that that is true. Partnering with like-minded brands, she travels the world to lead workshops on mindful eating, entrepreneurship, and authentic social media strategy. When she's not taking the latest fitness class in New York or going to a cacao ceremony or throwing a superfood smoothie bowl party in Brazil, you can find Ksenia attending transformational retreats and sharing her experiences on the Elephant Journal, poking fun at her own superfood obsession on YouTube, and all over the place on Instagram at Breakfast Criminals and Woken Wired. And she has her own podcast called Woken Wired that I was so... um, grateful to be a guest of. So let's get into it. Ksenia, thank you so much for being with us. I'm so excited, Katie. Wherever you got that bio, I need this because (laughs) that sounds great. I don't know who wrote this or when, but it sounds great. I'm the kind of person who rewrites my bio every time before you submit it. So this version really feels aligned to me right now because it does really represent the mosaic of different pieces of everything I do and kind of ties it together in the heart space. So I appreciate that. And back to you saying for you, the highlight of what we've done so far or what came to mind first was laying out flowers and crystals on my body and doing that photo shoot and social media session and whatever other magic we created during that day in Brooklyn. For me, one of the most magical things of how we connected is the fact that it happened through Instagram because at the time my boyfriend Eric and I were doing this right. thing called Boyfriend Sundays where every single Sunday he would take over my account and do his crazy boyfriend stuff that mm-hmm. people really loved because he's hilarious and he used to be a raw vegan chef and he knows a lot about crystals. And so he was in Arizona for the Gem and Mineral show, which was actually mm-hmm. him planting the seeds for Crystal Criminals, which is our pro- like fastest growing project now that we didn't even know was going to happen and he walked into the local juice local juicery and he was just commenting on a bunch of products there and he picked up i think it was um boundless love no infinite Infinite love Love. yeah infinite love he picked up your i think it was the anointing oil infinite love and he smelled it and he included it in stories and said something like this smells amazing. Everyone needs to get it now. And you guys noticed that and invited me to your event in New York. And that's how we connected. So men right. and social media. <laughs> things I don't know how often those things come up on the Flower Lounge podcast, but here we are bringing them in. And how did we get from, you came to the Flower Lounge, which was so lovely. How did we get from there to Brooklyn? I don't 
don't even remember. We were just. I think that you guys were planning a trip to New York and you were scheduling the flower power photo shoots. Right. And Taylor, I think it was Taylor who reached out to me by email and said, do you want to exchange social media session for flower lounge session? That's right. Flower power. That's so awesome. Okay. So at the beginning of every podcast, just so we don't forget this little part, we do this exercise where you close your eyes and you go back to a time in your childhood when you played around flowers or plants or trees and see if you can identify a favorite and just think about what you were up to at the time. And if you have your favorite in mind, reflect on the three words you would use to describe its personality or its qualities or how it made you feel. And then whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes and just share a little bit about what you were thinking and where you were and your favorite and your three words. Wow, this is so clear. I know exactly what it is, but I don't know the English word for it, so you're going to have to help me there. So it's the one that you pick, and it's white and fluffy, and you blow on it? Dandelion. Oh, it's dandelion. That's dandelion? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. Like super bright yellow, but then once it goes to seed, it's like the little afro, right? Right. Yeah, yes. Yes. (laughs) The little seed afro. (laughs) Right. That's so cool. Cool. So yes, that's what comes to mind is growing up I, in Moscow, in Russia, I would spend every summer in our country house outside the city, which was very traditional. Most people had country houses where they would send their kids to spend time with grandmas and grandpas and forage mushrooms and help in the garden and sit by the fire at night and bike to the river. And gosh, I remember back then, I was counting days until we go back to the city so I can reunite with my computer and play computer games. <laughs> and now I am just, it feels like <laughs> such a magical time of connection to earth. Mm-hmm. And for me, the primary way I was connecting to nature without realizing I was doing it was by foraging mushrooms. I thought it was the most fun thing in the world. And you'd have to wake up early and put on your rain boots and all these layers. And then by the time you're out of the forest with baskets of, of forged mushrooms, it's hot and you're taking down, taking off layers and you're talking about what you're going to cook with those mushrooms. And around the same um, area, there were a lot of fields. And in those fields, we had a lot of dandelions. And I just remember when you asked me that question, I just remember so vividly that feeling of uh, picking up a dandelion and blowing in it and making a wish. Is that a thing that you guys do too in America? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. It's international. <laughs> Good. And what the words that come to mind with it is, is endless possibility because you're invited to wish and never stop dreaming. It's also this element of magic and power that we can really think something and bring it into our life experience through just thinking about it and wishing it in our hearts. And the third thing is earth. It's this deep connection to earth. It's that this fulfillment of wishes come from our connection to earth. And this sounds so philosophical and smart and grown up, but I've never thought about it this way before. (laughs) Oh, even better. So what we find is that The words you use to describe your favorite flower from childhood typically will describe your, the way that you bring your greatest gift into the world and your essence. So you are a woman of endless possibilities and magic and power, and you're um, exploring and teaching how when you think something, we bring it into reality, and that all of this magic comes from a connection to the earth. Does that sound like you? Wow. Spot on, sister. <laughs> That's amazing. Sounds totally like you. <laughs> That's perfect. So cool. Wow. I love it. I'm going to do it with people now. I used to do a similar test, but you bring out animals. The flower is a cool one, too. I'm going to do it with my mom. Aww. So, yeah, how long have you been in New York? Your mom's still in Russia, right? Yeah, my whole family is still in Russia. I have been in New York. I've been in the U.S. for 10 years. 
Wow. And in New York, probably about seven, a little bit on and off. You know how that goes. Do you miss home at all? Or does this feel like Yes, definitely. I've always felt like here is home and here is where I am my true self. And my astrologers and psychics and everyone confirms that this is where my, my full potential can be fully realized because every one of us has a geographical location on this earth where we, I don't want to say belong, but where we have the most chances to realize our full potential. And for me, it's the Northeast US. So I was told, and that's, that's what I feel very clearly. And I've never really, first few years, I was so busy figuring out how to get a green card without having to pay someone for a fake marriage (laughs) that missing my family wasn't on the forefront. And I remember my astrologer at some point told me that like once I settle down and really find my ways, then I'm going to start thinking about, well, what about my family? Because we are very close. And that's been coming up very strong in the past few weeks, actually, is is this desire to stay close and not to lose that connection with my ancestors and with my family. So, and interestingly, the new moon that we just entered on November 6th, is opening up this 18 month cycle where we're called to shift our gears from being career driven to being family driven and restore any family ties and relationships that need some attention. Mm, I love that. How often do you go back? Before I had a boyfriend, I went about twice a year. (laughs) Now I've probably been going once a year. Mm -hmm. And what is it that makes you feel, I mean, besides, you know, like the science of, you know, geomancy and astrology, what is it that, what engages in you in the Northeastern part of the U.S. that you feel like you're just like, wow, I'm totally in my element here? The moment I knew that New York is my place, and it wasn't always like that. When I first came here, I was charmed, but I didn't feel... Like I have my way and I know where to go and I have a community. So it took a while for sure. And a lot of going to yoga classes and talking to people and going to moon circles and making friends and ultimately creating the social media community is what really allowed me to find my place and my people. But when I first really knew that New York has a special place in my heart is when I would go traveling and I'm obsessed with traveling and I would come home to New York and driving in a bus or a cab back into Manhattan, I would see the skyline and everything in me would just light up with joy and excitement of being back here. And that was the first time ever in my entire life when I would go on an exciting trip and come home and be even more excited. Usually it's like this bit of sadness on my heart, oh, the adventure is over, back to routine. But with New York, it never feels like there's a routine. It just feels so new and exciting all the time Mm -hmm. that that's what it is. And now we're talking a lot about having a second home and building a cabin. Eric is obsessed with building an earth back home. So we are craving that nature. And not just being in the city, but for now, New York does still feel right as a home base. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And you talked about social, like building the social media community was a big part for you in terms of finding your place. And I think that a lot of us today uh, have that same experience, whether, you know, you're living in a small town or you're, um, you know, the moment that you sort of spread out on social media you're able to connect with people all over the world who have similar values and I love interviewing people on this podcast who um, have livelihoods that are not like typical right so like living just a little bit outside the box and um, yeah I wanted to talk to you about how I mean you pretty much make a living and survive in this world through your work with social media, right? Through posting pretty pictures on Instagram. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So did you ever think that you would do that? And how did that evolve? And by the way, if you're hearing the sirens, that's just part of New York. Yeah, that's totally fine. (laughs) Social media. Oh, gosh. So yeah, you know, the top layer of it is creating content 
posting beautiful images and, and writing things that resonate with people and sharing it all on platforms that reach people that want that. But behind that, of course, there's so many different pieces and elements. And for me, when I look back, it all was divinely assigned for me because when I was 16 or even younger, actually, I remember my dad's friend came over and he just came over into the room where I was playing computer games. And he's like, have you ever heard of this thing called blog? It's the same way you write and you share and all of the world sees it. <laughs> and that's the first time I heard about a blog. And then a couple of years later, I started my own blog on Live Journal. And at the time I was studying journalism and a lot of people in my sphere were doing that. So we would write about the books we're reading, the, the movies we're seeing, sharing philosophical ideas that are in our heads. And it's so interesting when I go back to that blog, which is still up, where I also shared like different boyfriends I would fall in love with in, on vacations in Italy. <laughs> All the pictures are there too, which is creepy, but I love going back. It's interesting to see how before there was a lot of social conditioning that I took on, how vulnerably and how much I was sharing like philosophy and, and deep thoughts and existentialism. Now I don't really do it because there's this fear of sounding stupid. I'm like, what if I don't know enough about this? Or what if I don't talk about this in a way that smart, sounds intelligent enough? It's interesting to just witness that come up in myself. And back then it was just, here we go. And so for me, I really found a sense of who I am piece by piece through sharing myself online. Back then it was Life Journal, then it became MySpace and other places. And then once I discovered Instagram, which happened for work, I, I got this really cool, at the time I thought, job managing social media community for a fashion brand in New York City. And I was just so on cloud nine. And they gave me a free iPhone because before that I had a Palm Pixie. Wow. And I had to learn Instagram. I was resistant to Instagram for the longest time. And then I just had to do it because that, that was part of the thing that the brands were getting on social media. So I learned Instagram for that. After two months, I lost that job and lost pretty much everything because I didn't get visa that I was expecting to get. And that's when I really started sharing things that I cared about. And through food and through mindfulness, bringing together and bringing out the messages of mindfulness and nourishment and yoga and, and meditation and all the things that I was into. And that just synchronistically ended up being picked up by Lululemon. They found one of my Pinterest pins and they really liked what they saw on it, which was a beautiful breakfast bowl in a heart shaped ceramic bowl. And they reached out and they said, are you keen on blogging for us indefinitely? <laughs> and I said, sure. So for a year I blogged for Lululemon and while figuring out how to stay in New York and how to not be kicked out of the country because I was given at the time 60 days to Ooh. pack my bags and leave and oh. leave all my dreams behind. Oh, that must have been really stressful. Oof, yeah, I don't even know how I did it. Well, I was getting more into yoga and meditation at the time. I think that's what got me through it. But I had to move out and live on my friend's couch after finding a dream apartment, a studio to myself at like 23 on the Upper East Side, you know, dream job and everything. And, and all of a sudden, just like everything crashed and burned. And I'm given 60 days and also got heartbroken at the same time. So it was just like one thing after the other. And for me, it was this choice. Do I just get depressed and leave? Because logically, there was no way to stay past those 60 days. There was absolutely no way. I saw every lawyer I could possibly see. There was no way out besides those 60 days. And so I ended up just counting on faith and sticking around and doing things that I could be doing and getting as many meetings with as many people as possible to just keep feeling out for a pathway. And I was given a pathway. I ended up going to uh, 
full-time ballet school. And mind you, I had never done a day of ballet before that in my entire life. And that was what I chose to do, to stay in this country and to buy myself some time to figure out my paperwork. So nine months later, I ended up participating in New York Dance Parade with a Brazilian samba crew, walking down the streets of New York. I ended up learning capoeira and performing with a capoeira crew and uh, learning some ballet. I still have a turnout from that for the first time. <laughs> how bizarre. I mean, how wild. Like, how did you even stumble upon dance as the way that would get you to be able to stay? Well, there were, see, it was, I think it was the middle of the year. It was winter. So going to like a school with a degree, I already had a graduate degree. So, mm -hmm. and it was a lot of money. So I wasn't really looking at that and it wasn't even an option because uh, enrollment wasn't open. And the only two options I was given is one, either go to a language school, which I did not need at all, or go to a dance school, which was accepting people on an ongoing basis. And they, because I already had a student visa, they could prolong it. Wow. So all I was doing is buying time. There was no guarantee on the other end of it what would happen. So I was just doing what I knew. My parents were helping me. I was doing some jobs that I wasn't allowed to do, <laughs> just to stay afloat. And I went to Hawaii and I discovered acai. And it was one of these things where like, what, what the hell? It made no sense. I had no apartment, no money, and I'm there deciding to go to Hawaii. But it was like this deep inner calling you have to go there's something there for you so I went and that's how I discovered acai and that's how breakfast criminal started by me really sharing my passion and love for acai and the way it's served with love and that a couple of years later when breakfast criminals was established led me to being taken to the Brazilian jungle and meeting acai farmers and climbing the acai trees and creating content about that so it's just back to your idea that you shared on, on my podcast with you it's those wild ideas. When we follow them in the moment, they might make no sense at all. Like there's no logical pathway to justifying it. But when we follow them and just trust that, and then we'll look back, it's like, whoa, it was all set up. It's like this magical web where, where one action, one thought leads to the other, and you guide it exactly to where you need to be. So that's what I'm relearning now as I am growing and expanding my business, it's this daily quest of how do I not let strategy and thinking what I should be doing overpower those heart and soul callings that have always guided me exactly to where I need to be. Love that. That's a struggle that, I mean, I think all of us go through in businesses or in, in anything. It's like the what should be done or what everyone else does versus those weird and wild strange inklings and ideas right it's like your idea of instead of putting money into doing trade shows let me just throw the wildest flower party ever <laughs> and people will show up and you transformed the industry through doing that and and that's exactly what i'm talking about so okay so let's dial it back to you were in Hawaii, you discovered acai. There was a huge depth and meaning around that. How did you come up with Breakfast Criminals? And where did the criminal part come from? Hmm. That is still a mystery I'm solving. <laughs> I can tell you what happened. Why it happened, I don't know. I had just discovered my meditation teacher, Harshita Wagner, David Harshita Wagner, and I was really deep into yoga with Tara Styles doing teacher training. And I remember I was meditating in my tiny little loft room in, in Nolita with little mice and little roaches because it's New York and that's all I could afford. And I really wanted to be in a cool location. And I remember coming out of meditation and it's something just clicked because I was already, I already had my personal Instagram account. Um, but the name has changed like probably 15 times in those past six years. Woken Wired? Uh, 
yeah, it was back then. It was Ksenia Lova. Ksenia was spelled with a with an X, and I shortened my last name after Lova to Lova. Sexy. And, right. And it was. Uh, <laughs> it's like a Russian villain. That's what it sounds like. Oh, um, interesting. <laughs> um, and so I came out of the meditation, and I realized that pictures of my acai bowls and smoothie experiments and of the striking red heart-shaped bowl they were getting so much more interaction than anything else I was posting so I was like why don't I create a separate thing I love breakfast I love traveling so I'll create this thing breakfast criminals this new account and I'll just start sharing breakfasts you know simple I don't need a lot of time for that I'll just start there and so I started by posting a couple of pictures of breakfast I had recently eaten. It was like a croissant from Le Pan Quotidien with a yogurt bowl, um, like a little something, something with Victoria's Secret bags in it (laughs) back then. Oh my gosh. And that's how it started. And that started growing faster than uh, anything. And back then, no one really had like 10,000 followers. It wasn't a thing, you know, like so few people. And back then, like, there were probably three people in the world posting about acai bowls. So I just caught the wave and I was manually sitting down and clicking on the hashtag acai bowl and looking at every other person in the world who was posting about and connecting with them. Clicking on the hashtag smoothie bowl and manually going and just connecting with everyone who was into the same stuff as me. And so unknowingly, that's the thing, you know, yeah, you could consider it a marketing tactic. It certainly is. I wasn't even thinking. I just naturally, I don't know what it is, but I have like a chip in my head or in my heart or in between somewhere that just tells me exactly what to do and translates it all into the digital world. And I'm often blind to it because it's just so natural to me. But when I, that's why I do the work that I do with social media and I'm releasing in conscious social media online program in early 2019 is because I am realizing that just by me opening my mouth and sharing the things I know, it actually means a huge difference for people. So yeah, that's what happened. Okay. One question that popped up that I've been wanting to ask you when you talk about you had your own account, then you realized people were liking smoothie bowls. So you created a separate account. How do you today balance when you post on say things that you just want to share because you're into them and you're exploring and you're discovering and you're kind of putting out the feelers like does anyone else feel this way or have you seen this this is sort of like you know things that are happening in current for you versus putting content out there that you know a particular crowd or your community or your people really gravitate towards It's a fine balance. There's certain vision I have for that, but there are no strict rules. I'm so intuitive with it. I think the most important thing for anyone who has multiple accounts or even one account is just getting super clear on what is my message and how do I want to communicate it? What are some things and themes that fit into that vision? And then every time before you post, asking yourself, will this add value at least to one person's life? And that's, that's an amazing start. If you just do that, that that's going to change everything. And then if you have multiple accounts, like for me, you know, I have over 10 accounts probably. Um, like five of them are very active. Other ones, not so much. But the main ones are Breakfast Criminals and Woke and Wired and Woke and Wired Podcast. And at this point for me breakfast criminals is this conversation about mindfulness and how to start your day in a way where you get out of bed and you're excited to live your life and then it's whatever it takes whether it's smoothie bowls or paleo breakfast or cacao ceremonies or acai it doesn't matter um so anything that fits under under that umbrella goes there and also more because I do notice that whenever I talk about some of the behind the scenes things of my entrepreneurial journey and traveling, people love that as well. And on Woken Wired, that's specifically 
me as an entrepreneur who does start all these brands, who is also a speaker and a traveler. So it's more of mindset and beautiful travel photos. Um, sometimes, of course, I do a lot of cross promotion in marketing. They call it growth hacking. But for example, today I released a new podcast episode with Danica Breisha, and she's all about um, mindful nourishment, body positivity, entrepreneurship, intuition, manifestation. And so what I did is I released the podcast and then I put up a blog post on Breakfast Criminals where I shared the morning routine takeover that treated on the Breakfast Criminals account a few months ago. And then I linked them both to each other. So there's always links and connections between the two. And I think that's an important thing because we assume when we post something that people see everything we put out there, they don't. So if I posted a cacao recipe two months ago and I thought I shared it everywhere I could, I screamed it from the rooftops. And then five people in one day messaged me and asked me, hey, how do you make your cacao? The fact that they don't know how to make cacao and they, it's not obvious for my people, Page, it's not on them it's on me it takes that consistency and repeating things that are important to us and re revisiting messages that we really want to be out there because instagram moves on and life moves on and no one really pays as much attention to what you're putting out there as you do mm -hmm. those are the things i talk about and think about every day <laughs> what's one of the biggest challenges you've faced operating in the social media world Hmm. I am just big time starting to learn saying no. So defining the kinds of opportunities I want and not just get it, getting excited at any opportunity that comes my way. Because yeah, there is like part of it is when anything comes my way, there's this awe and gratitude of, wow, I didn't even have to leave my house or put pants on and people are sending me <laughs> offers and want to pay me money, you know? <laughs> so there is this sense of presence to this magic that social media can open up for any of us. And at the same time, now I'm at a place where I can and I am saying more no's. And so defining what are things that are aligned and defining things that are not. And yeah, sometimes it's really challenging. So it's like I keep coming back to myself. I check in with my friends. I check in with my gut. And also, it was a challenge. This is another thing I want to share. It seemed like a challenge at the time, but now it just feels like an amazing lesson. Is this thing of some days I would wake up and feel like breakfast criminals doesn't feel as exciting anymore to me. Or I would talk myself into the story that it's not as relevant. Like, and, you know, anytime I would wake up and the engagement is not where I want it to be. I would create this whole story of how people don't care anymore. It's not relevant. And I think it's so easy to get swayed by, away by that external feedback. When in reality, when we just connect back to our internal compass and to things that light us up and bring us joy and share from that place, it's going to be relevant no matter what it is about. So for me, it's this journey of, first of all, breakfast criminals, I can't just possibly shut down because by now it's run not just by me, but a whole community of people and there's stakeholders and a website and contributors. So it's not just me and that feels incredible. And also keeping challenging myself and redefining what it is and finding ways for it to fit into what I do in an organic and authentic way. And, you know, sometimes it's just a power of language. Like for me, like when you read my bio, putting that tie there that my work is about connecting people to their hearts, whether it's through breakfast or cow or conscious conversations or events, that, that's what it is. And when I think about it that way from a bigger vision, if food is what, resonates with people the most then that's what I'm gonna keep doing because that I love food some days I'm not excited about it and some days I love it and and that's all okay it's like those ebbs and flows and being okay with them and having a freaking life outside of social media that's one of the biggest lessons I'm learning is we get so hung up on social media followers and likes and I can't even tell you how many people just have this idea 
and it's totally normal. We all have that. It's just like ingrained in us. We need to have more followers. We need to get that. We need to get that. And we spend all this time updating our Instagram and posting and, and figuring out what to post and what hashtags to use instead of actually doing real life changes and expansion in our business that would have a much bigger impact. I think we often forget that social media is just a tool to get somewhere bigger and more real. And it's important to remember that, that social media is just like this platform, but ultimately what we do with it is totally up to us and it can be so huge. Mm, that's so interesting. I, I have, you know, I have my personal Instagram page. Which and, I love. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> I've been posting like, so I was really diligent in the beginning and then I was realizing that with all of this craziness with the new building, uh, I was posting like once a week and oh, I kind of look, and it's not that I don't go into Instagram because I do and I like see what everyone else is up to, but I have just been expending so much energy in getting this massive building ready to be opened and move into that it's like I just haven't had a like an ounce left for creative output. Hmm. But I love what you say about it's because you're doing things, right? It, it isn't because you... <laughs> it's so funny right think like oh we didn't post it's because we're not doing things <laughs> you're just not documenting it <laughs> right totally so yeah, I have you, those days too how do you encourage yourself to keep documenting what you're up to when you are at like almost maximum capacity like almost to the burnout point because you're you're you know, and these, you could just say like, well, just take a break for a few months and then you'll hit it hard later. But mm -hmm. in those moments that you're like, you're expanding so much that you're, mm -hmm. you have like zero creative energy left. How do right. you kind of work your way around that to just sort of keep dripping? Well, first you just go and share that you have zero creative energy. <laughs> 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 it's that exercise of stopping thinking about what we should be saying or doing and actually sharing what's there for us. It's like get, being what is. I get, I, I personally get hung up sometimes because I'm like, geez, I'm just sharing about myself. Like, am I adding value to anyone else's life just by sharing about right. myself? You know, like I start feeling narcissistic. You know, a few times I shared on stories it's so funny because with breakfast criminals I've shared like pretty much my whole life like I invite people into my relationship into my kitchen into my wardrobe into everywhere into my bath filled with flowers <laughs> and with Woken Wired I never really put a lot of thought and intention into it until recently where I have been stepping out more into who I am the human behind all the things I do and so doing stories on Woken Wired is something that's newer for me and recently I did something like just share that this moon got me feeling crazy. I feel so overwhelmed, you know, and I was like, this is so stupid to share. Why would I even do it? But I just feel called to share it. And I did. And I got so many messages from people feeling the same way and a few messages from astrologers explaining why. And so then I was able to share with back with my community. Guys, we're fine. This is why it's happening. And I was just so reassured that just sharing where we're at is sometimes all that needs to I actually anytime all that needs to happen and I totally get what you're saying I didn't post for two days on breakfast criminals I usually try to post once a day and I didn't post for two days because I was I'm working on relaunching my um Ksenia dot in my C website with all my social media offerings and gearing up to launch my program and I just gave this really big talk at a conscious leadership conference in Aspen where like 40 people came up to me after and said that I completely shifted their relationship with social media. And I was just so dedicated to that part of my life and my career of getting that offering out there, getting that newsletter out that I've been wanting to get out for nine months that I just had zero space of talking about food. Listen, I have a lot of images lined up, a lot of things I can either regram from people or reuse from my website, but I had just like zero space or it feels like there's just zero space to share anything and I think it's fine in those moments when we are not called to share anything at all it's it's totally fine and at the same time I've had moments where 
me and my friend Hillary we did this challenge where for one week we posted twice a day. We're just like, let's just try it. Gary V says that we should all be posting four times one when we're posting. So let's just try it. And so I posted twice a day on both Breakfast Criminals and Woken Wired. And it was really refreshing. I actually recommend everyone challenges themselves to do it at least once because what I learned from it is when there's this accountability and responsibility that you take on, there's less time to mess around and worry about what you're going to share and more space to just be present and share what is there for you. I wrote some really cool stuff that week and, and it really seems to resonate with people. So I think it's a fine balance between having like a schedule or something that puts you out of your comfort zone so you share more and at the same time if it really doesn't feel like it empowers you in the moment and you need to put your phone away and go take a bath with some infinite love then go do that love that and when you were when you gave your talk um about conscious leadership and you said that so many people were like wow you've changed you've completely shifted my relationship with social media what was it that you said or what were a couple of things that they reflected back to you that you said that they felt so shifted around it? I actually wrote them down somewhere just to remind myself that I'm actually doing something good. <laughs> but I think the main ideas were a lot of times when anyone looks up how to grow your social media or takes any course on it, it makes it seem like it's like this end all be all. Let's all get a million followers and become rich. And and it's very technical and there's not a lot of space to be intuitive and soulful and aligned within it. And what I talked about is instead of focusing on what hashtag to use, yes, know your hashtags, don't worry, I'm gonna give them to you in my course. But instead of putting all your energy in there, put that same energy into feeling aligned, into being present in your body and in your life and sharing from that place. And then something magical happens and it really resonates with people and the right opportunities come your way. Because when we share from a place of being worried or because we think we have to, it just like becomes another stressor and people pick up on it. There's another human on the other side of the screen always. And I think we forget that. And those people pick up on those vibes, whether they know it or not. So I think that was one important thing and you know with that seeing social media as a tool and a manifestation tool to create a life you want instead of end all and be all and not trusting not trying to follow like any one size fits all process because there isn't one if there's anything I learned from doing my podcast it's this this idea that everyone creates their own way there is literally no formula for anything and it's okay to surround yourself with stories and formulas that inspire you because we all can take bits and pieces and then apply them to our lives and businesses in our own way but there just isn't any formula so the as long as we take some smart strategy combine that with intuition and alignment and 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 just remember that in the old times, people would gather around fires and share stories. And through sharing those stories around fire, they would find community and support and healing and a sense of belonging and connection. Storytelling is this form of art and healing that is now so happens to be happening online on Instagram. So why would we not treat it the same way? Why would we go and say, you know, I hear people so often say social media is this it has so much negativity in it. Here's the thing. Social media has no energy to it whatsoever. Any energy that social media has is what we brought there. So just like technology in general, just like money, social media has no energy on its own and it only has the energy that we bring to it. And I think that for people is a liberating thought that you're the master of your life and your social media. It is liberating and it's liberating that you get to tell the kind of stories that you want to tell and surround yourself with the kind of people that you want to be surrounded by. I want to ask you uh, about your podcast. What's been your mm. biggest learning from having a podcast? Mm. And one more thing I want to add there about surrounding yeah. yourself. This is yeah. another thing a lot of people told me. One thing I, I gave people the homework. I said, if there is anyone or anything in your feed that triggers you, disempowers you, 
brings you to a place of comparison or judgment, go and unfollow that person or press the magical mute button and only have things in your home feed on Instagram of things that show you what's possible, that put you in a space of infinite possibilities and make you think bigger than you already think. And people are like, oh, I can do that. Because we get so stuck with what we have and we forget that we can change it. So go and unfold everyone that doesn't empower you and create your own community instead of being stuck with what you had created sometime in the past. Um, Back to the podcast. What have I learned from from the interviews or from doing the podcast itself? Just from being itself. I it's just having been uh, having done one for over a year now. I feel like I've learned a ton, and I was just curious. Hmm. You know, I want to hear your head. learning. Mine. What's, what's your biggest learning? Um, so many things, but I really enjoy not preparing a lot. I mean, I like. I like to know who I'm talking to and what's, you know, really, you know, what is really in their heart, but there is this kind of magic from deep listening and being like a hundred percent, um, awake and aware with someone and just seeing where that leads to. There's, there's, there's this magic in the presencing or in the beingness of not thinking, not preparing, not shooting, not right. Um, that is really powerful. And I think that's, it's just affected my communication in general with, um, with people and it's helped me become a better speaker and more comfortable speaking and hearing my own voice and being heard. Uh, it's just been a really interesting practice. Those are like the top two. I think that stand out the most. There's a ton of things I could go into, but what about you? Mine are very similar. The top one is this very humbling idea. I remember at the beginning, I was so attached to the idea of where the conversations would go and how spiritual they would be. And with time, after getting really stressed out and tense about things not going the way I expected them to on some of the conversations, <laughs> I was just like, man, just relax, girl. Stop thinking. Stop trying to imagine something or create something that's not just be with what is if you're called to invite that person and have this conversation there's power and wisdom in it it might not look the way you want it to and it's this idea that we all can learn something from each other always so it's this idea of curiosity and openness and willingness to learn from people who might be completely different and are on a different path we all can learn something from each other so that's a big humbling realization there and then the other one is this idea again that you create your own path and we all no one knows any answers we're all just googling things and searching them on through instagram hashtags and trying to figure things out some people are more confident in putting them out or their process works differently and it's all okay wherever you are in your journey it's fine i think it's just important to surround ourselves with stories that again expand us for me having a podcast has been a massive expander because just some of the things i've learned how other people do things i feel like i that gave me permission to give myself permission to be who i am and to do things my own way and to just have fun with it to embrace my inner richard branson meets gary v <laughs> Meets Ksenia. Right. So tell me more about your new program that's coming up. I don't know much about it yet. <laughs> I know it's happening. <laughs> um, you know, this is a really funny story because I remember I've always been interested in healing and breath work and anything that was a mind expanding and a spirit expanding thing and after having some profound profound experiences in meditation and going on a pilgrimage to India I just kept seeking and seeking and I'm always have been seeking and I remember I went on this healers retreat in New Jersey on this beautiful lake and this beautiful house and we were learning Reiki and doing shamanic journeying and eating homegrown food 
and doing moon rituals and charging our water with crystals and all the things. And I had this totally clear realization dawn on me that I am here to empower healers of the world and the game changers to share their message. And I know how to do it through social media and I'm here to empower people to share their voice. And I, it, this message just kept coming back to me in so many different ways in so many different contexts. And I did it here and there. I started doing speaking. I've been doing speaking for a few years now in leading conscious social media workshops at a lot of wellness and consciousness and yoga conferences. And at the same time, I knew that the way to really get it out there was an online course. And so I bought this $3,000 course on how to make an online course. And that was like three years ago and I never finished it. And I just like literally two weeks ago, I was like, I need to finish it just like to get it. I need to like complete this chapter in my head. And I did. And I realized I already pretty much knew everything that was in it because at this point I've just been surrounded by this world so long. And uh, for all these years, I've just been creating reasons and listening to my own limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome on why I can't do a course. Like I don't like doing email marketing. I don't want to bother people. I don't want people to think I'm an imposter, like whatever, you know, all the thoughts that hold have held me back. And after this talk in Aspen, something really clicked and in a big way, you know, I've always gotten incredible feedback. Anytime I've done client sessions or group work or workshops, the feedback I've gotten was just like mind blowing every time, but I forget it. I, I've always just, it's like erased. <laughs> it's like eternal sunshine of a spotless mind. And I would just go back into my small limiting beliefs. And, and this time it was like a, this massive expansion. I think it's where I am with my life and the work I'm doing with cacao as well. And just this bigger inner trust um where i was just like i need to do this and i did a whole series of stories on instagram stories just asking people hey guys the feedback i got from this workshop blew me away and here's what i'm thinking would you be down to do a program with me and how would you want to do it and so i've been doing that actually more in all of my accounts just like letting people in help me decide on my logo help me decide what's going to go in my cacao blend help me decide what the program is going to be because it's not for me what's the point of hiding it let people come on this journey with you and help be part of it and everyone's investment and excitement for it is so much higher this way and, and it's this transparency that people also value so that survey like clearly showed me that people want this stuff and uh, it's going to be launching sometime in early 2019 and you can leave your email on ksenia.nyc to know where it when it launches and it's going to be something like an eight-week program where we have weekly zoom calls and you get your homework and you have your group accountability group and a closed facebook group where because when you do this work in community, it's even more powerful. So it's anything you've ever wanted to know about social media and with a cheerleader for you to have an expansive mindset about it, where we not just make social media the end goal and you feeling ease and excitement about sharing yourself, but it's about reconnecting with your purpose and finding your voice and how does that fit into your business and how do you monetize it and how do you collaborate and how do you get your message out there in a big way? Because there's no time to waste. And the truth is, each one of us is a brand. Whether we know it or not, everyone looks you up as soon as you meet someone. Everyone's looking you up on Instagram. So might as well have the most authentic and powerful representation of what values you have on there. Whether you're selling something or you're not selling something. That's such a good point. I think that something that I think my team has found interesting is that when, to me, it's like, of course, when we do like job postings and folks um, send in their applications, we always look them up on social media and, you know, both Facebook and Instagram. And it's amazing the things that you see in terms of someone being, you know, it being a representation of themselves. Um, I think that we forget that. Mm. We, we forget that and um, I love how you 
have the ability to make things intuitive and soulful and feel good, but at the same time, you have just enough strategy and framework and visioning and themes around um, what you create that make it really come together Mm. and be, you know, not just a representation, but also like skillful. Right. Yeah, that's the point. I'm giving you the framework. Um, I'm helping you find your own mindset that empowers you by showing you what's possible in all the different things I've created in social media from fair trade movements, fair trade grassroots movements to trips around the world and and retreats and, and selling different products that really change people's lives. Anything is possible. So I'm just there to show you what's possible and give you the tools and then it's you and then it's you and it's your inner guidance and your inner wisdom and creativity okay second to last question if anything were possible which we know it is (laughs) obviously what would you create Mm. something wild and crazy some crazy vision that you've got beyond the january launch wow that's crazy i'm just envisioning connection somehow not even having to use social media to feel connected with humans and for everyone to be able to connect into this invisible web of belonging and being part of community whose values align with yours whether you're living in an amazon jungle with no technology or in South Africa, or in Russia, or New York, somehow just for everyone to feel like they belong and their voice matters and they can connect with themselves and with others. I don't know if if you like press a button or you just think about it. I'll think about the technology, but that's the outcome. I would made me think of the event that we did together at Anima Mundi and just how, you know, we met through Instagram. We both have a podcast. We decided to do a live podcast recording, host an event. It goes real time, face to face, really nicely. That's true. Yeah, it's like that merging of the amazingness and the infinite possibilities that I've seen created through social media how can we take what we've learned there and actually apply it back IRL? (laughs) Because I think we're forgetting that. We're disconnecting from that now. Everyone's on their phones on the subway. Right. And you might be sitting next to someone who you could create the most amazing collaboration or who may open an incredible door for you or vice versa, right? You're fighting those like two into your own phones to realize. (laughs) Maybe you follow each other on Instagram, but you didn't recognize each other. Right. You gotta keep the heads yeah. up. Keep your eyes right. up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so last question for you. Um, is there any piece of like advice or words of wisdom or something that you just often find yourself sharing with people lately? Yes. Follow your gut. Don't look for any outside justification or support, or clarification. Just listen to what your body says hell yes to, and go there, and trust that the why is going to be revealed later, but that doesn't even matter, because all that matters right now is feeling aligned, and feeling joyful, and feeling alive, and present. If we're not feeling those things, then what's the point? Well said. Thank you so much for being with us, Ksenia, and thank you for all your gifts. Thank um, you, Jay. Again, just to repeat, if um, folks want to join your program, which sounds amazing, I'll be there um, to, to look for you at ksenia.nyc, right? Correct. And any and, other and- websites and social media handles that you want to throw in if people want to do Yeah, message me. I'd love to hear what you guys are taking away from this podcast, if it's good. And so DM me at woke and wired and tell me what you're getting from this and ask me anything. 
Love it. And if you're into mornings and mindfulness and breakfasts and morning rituals, <laughs> then definitely check out Breakfast Criminals on Instagram. There's so much goodness and weekly takeovers every Wednesday, which Katie, you should do. Yeah. Let's do it. Katie is going to show us her morning routine on Breakfast Criminals Instagram. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to The Flower Lounge. I'm Katie Hess, and we'll be releasing a new podcast every Wednesday. If you like what you heard or you know someone who might be touched by our conversation, share it with them. And don't forget to subscribe. To find out what your favorite flowers mean about you, take the quiz at lotusway.com.